Welcome or welcome back to the Relentless Sportsman channel. If you like well-rounded content, you're in the perfect place today. This boat behind me is amazing and I'm gonna share with you why it's gonna help you catch more fish and in my opinion, the best boat money can buy. I'm talking about this boat right there. It's the best boat money can buy. Stay tuned, I'll explain why. So before you call me arrogant, or before you become super skeptical, which I don't blame you, hear me out. So the boat you see here is an Alumacraft 1236. 1236 because it's 12 feet long and it's 36 inches or three feet wide at the front right here. So I'm gonna go through some reasons really fast why this boat is so amazing for fishing. Number one, you don't need a trailer. You can put it in the back of your truck or you can put it on the trailer, so you have options. Number two, it's made of aluminum, so it's not going to rust. There's people that use aluminum boats from the 1960s and they work just fine. Number three, it's light enough for one person to handle. It's great with two, but if you're by yourself and you're just alone out in the woods somewhere and you need to get this into a body of water you're pursuing, you can do it all by yourself. Number four, it's affordable. Go online and look for used John boats like this, 12 feet long. You can find them for as low as $200. And a lot of times you just need to spray paint because the paint came off and they look brand new. They're gonna last a long time and they're affordable. Number five, you can modify it a lot. It's scalable. If you wanna put a motor on it, put a motor on it. If you just want a trolling motor, do that. If you only wanna use oars, do that. You can make this exactly how you want it to be. You can put a libel on here. You can put casting decks on here. You can put permanent lights on here. If you ever Google John boat to bass boat conversion, hundreds of images are gonna show up with people that have decked this thing out. And it's really cool to see the creative ideas that people have for boats like this. Number six, you have access to literally every body of water with the exception of tiny creeks. Small rivers, ponds, lakes, reservoirs, the ocean, you name it, you can fish on those bodies of water with this boat. And the last reason, we talked about its versatility. It's also versatile as a hunting boat. If you're a person who loves to fish, but you're a well-rounded outdoorsman, like I would encourage you to be, you can use this for hunting and fishing. You can easily make a duck blind out of this. You can easily use this to get across some kind of body of water, put a deer in it. If it bleeds, who cares? You spray it out with a hose when you get back. All right, let's look at this with all the gear in it. It's nothing fancy, but it works. It's reliable. Back here, we have an outboard motor. I got the biggest size you can get for this boat because I want as much power as you need. In a windy situation, you're going up a river, which I often do, I river fish more than I lake fish, you're gonna need as much power as you can. So for this boat, the largest motor I can get is a 9.9. It's a really simple setup, like I said before. Back here, I've got my transducer. This is mobile. It comes off this ram mount right here, goes down here, and I'm set to go. I can use this, and a lot of times I don't use locators at all, but when I do, I have the option. All you have to do is loosen it right here, like this, and you can change the angle, and you can also take it off when needed. Back here, I put my anchor on top of my life jacket in this section right here. This cord right here goes up to my locator. Let's talk about that for a second. So this is the Garmin Striker 4. I put it on this platform right here so it doesn't move around. I can go wide open on a river or a lake and this thing doesn't move. It doesn't look great, it's not fancy, but it's mobile. All I do is lift it up and I can take it out of the boat or I set it back down when I need it for fishing. Of course, the gas line's gonna run up to this old gas tank that works. The gas tank came with the motor. It was a good deal at the time. Over here, you'll notice that I've got this little net, but it's also scalable. I want a net that extends because I can use it to reach fish easier, but it also goes a lot smaller, which is perfect because I can stow it away, it's out of the way, but it's there in case I need it. So I just use a boat cushion. I don't use anything else because once I get to where I'm gonna go, I stand up the rest of the time. You may also have noticed this light back here. This is the light that goes in the back of the boat. Click it on, it turns on, it turns off. It goes down here and you can unscrew it right down here if you want to. Moving up here, this is just my live minnow bucket, my floater bucket. I'll toss this over the edge and it's tied on down here. Oars, you've gotta have oars as a backup. That thing dies, you're gonna need oars. It's this thing I really love. It's a great seat for my wife. It's a great seat for anybody else who happens to come with me. They've got a nice seat that swivels and turns. I want people that go fishing with me to feel comfortable and to be comfortable. Next thing up here you'll notice is a rod holder. Sometimes I put one on that side as well. This just clamps onto the side. 
You can take it on and off. It's very, very versatile. You can change the angle of your rod. Next, you'll notice that I've got this battery in here. This is a 12 volt battery, which means I can only go up to 55 pound thrust for a trolling motor. I often keep that in the front up here. It helps balance the boat a little bit. Even if I stand up there to use this trolling motor, it's a good balance with the gas tank and the outboard motor. Now this Minn Kota motor right here is 55 pound thrust. It gets its power obviously from the battery, goes up here. I mount it on the front. You may have noticed that up here, I've got a block of wood. And I use that so I can mount the trolling motor and it's not going anywhere. This thing is solid. I took off these little things and I just have it go right into this board here. And it's really effective at staying there. And it gives me the option of keeping the trolling motor on the front but of course, if I want it on the back, where the outboard is, which I often do, I just put these back on there. I can mount it on the transom. The front has a light as well. It's mobile. I unscrew it in case you're fishing at night and you want to stay legal. Everything I just added to this boat can go on the boat and come off the boat in a matter of seconds. Nothing on here looks nice. It's not fancy. It's not something you're going to see in an outdoor magazine. And maybe that stuff is important to you. But if you really care about fishing, you can't worry about the way things look. You have to start thinking about what's going to help you accomplish your goal. Are you out there to look good or are you out there to catch fish and become a better angler, to become a better person? It's really important to think about those things if you're going to partake in a sport like fishing. Being at 1236 is a big deal. 12 feet is the perfect length. Why? Because one person can haul it around through the woods, you can drag it into a lake, you can dump it off the back of your truck into a pond, you can put it into the back of your truck, you don't need a trailer, and 36 inches wide adds a lot of stability to your boat. A lot of boats are only 32 inches wide at the front, and that's a problem for stability. I am not promoting a Lumacraft at all. You can buy any brand you want, as long as it's a John boat that's 12 feet long and 36 inches wide at the front. Okay, so as we look at this boat, you're gonna see it's heavily worn. I've only had this for a few years, but you can tell where I stand most of the time. It's worn up here from somebody sitting in the front. It's also worn down here on the bottom because I drag it through the woods all the time. The weight of this boat right here is 125 pounds. I can easily maneuver this boat by myself. Into my truck, out of my truck, sliding it through the woods, into a small lake, into a big lake, it doesn't matter. Being 125 pounds makes it easier for me to slide around. And also, that's why it's not a V-hole in the front. It's flat right here because I actually drag it from that end over there. It also gives me or somebody else more room up here while you fish. A V-hole obviously is a V-shape. You have less room with those. But the specs of this boat are one thing. The reason why this is the most amazing boat is because of its versatility. Having a large boat does not mean you have more access to more water. It's the exact opposite. I've heard from so many people in groups online or conversations I've had that I need a bigger boat because I want to access more bodies of water. The smaller the boat you have, whether a kayak, canoe, or a boat like I just shared with you, the more water you can access. I can prove it to you. Let's go on a walk to a small little river. There's a hooded meganza right there. Do you see it? Look at it. There it goes. It's flying away. Anyways, this is a small river. I've kayaked down this river, canoed down this river, and used my boat down this river. You can't do that with a big boat. Now, when it comes to a big boat, what I'm talking about is a boat that requires a trailer, something you can't drag on the ground. You have to go to a proper landing, something like that. And don't get me wrong, I am not against big boats. I love fishing in big boats. They're comfortable, they're convenient on large bodies of water. You can have many people in there at the same time. There's a lot of benefits to that. You can purchase this boat in 10 feet, 12 feet, 14, 16, 18, 20. But the perfect size, in my opinion, is 12 because it's comfortable for two people and a child, two people and a dog. 14 is going to be more comfortable for two people, though. But the problem with the 14 foot John Boy is that it's a lot harder to maneuver with one person. It's also harder to stick in the back of your pickup truck because it's going to stick out the tailgate a lot further. But I'm also not saying you should go out there and sell your boat and get rid of everything and start from scratch, buy one of these boats. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that if you're starting with nothing, this is a good boat to get. Or if you're looking for a more mobile solution, this is a good boat to get. There's a good chance if you're watching this video, if you have a boat already, there's a good chance it probably needs a trailer because of its size and its weight. 
This boat doesn't need either. I have a trailer because it's convenient, but there's a lot of times I take it off the trailer and put it in my truck because that's more convenient for where I happen to fish that day on Backwoods Lakes, which I love to do. So a couple years ago, I built this cart. If you've subscribed to my channel, you've probably seen the video with this cart. It's got flat free all rubber tires. It's made out of lumber, so it's a lot stronger than PVC. And here's the beautiful thing. If you have a small boat like this, you can put it on that cart and you can haul it down a trail if you need to. It's designed for a kayak and a canoe, but it can also work for a small light boat like this, as long as you don't have a lot of stuff in it. Always remember, this isn't the only way to fish, but it's a very effective way to fish that's worked. I've literally caught thousands of game fish from that boat because it gave me access to water that I would not have access to otherwise with other types of fishing boats. If you'd like to learn more about this boat, and about tactics that I use for fishing, make sure you ask me down in the comments below. If you'd like to learn more about the card I just shared with you, check out this video right here. It's gonna help you become more of a mobile angler with small boats, kayaks, and canoes. Thanks for stopping by the Relentless Sportsman channel today. I'm glad you spent this time with me. I'll see you again next time.